Okay. Oh, Moses, you, you move, you move it like you're going to put your hair and makeup on or something like that. Don't leave that alone. Stop that. Come on. Let me get coffee too. Oh, wow. First of all, I'm enjoying your, it's a mocha, right? I'm enjoying Yeah, that's a mocha. That's a mocha, sir. Uh, so, first of all, we, we, we only use African coffees, first of all. Mm. So, let's start with the chocolate. Yeah. The chocolate, unlike most chocolate available, this is this is not grown in West Africa. This is grown in Tanzania. This chocolate, this, these chocolate this drops. Chocolate, uh-huh. These chocolate drops are actually uh, the cacao comes from a region called Mbeya mm-hmm. in, in Tanzania. Mm-hmm. So traditionally in Mbeya, um, the group of people that we find in Mbeya is Ngoni people. Oh yeah, Ngoni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody uh, comes from the Ngoni people, no? Yeah. So in Southern Africa, you find Ngoni people. Mm. Uh, so there's some sort of a relationship uh, between the people that you find in Ngoni, in, in, um, in Mbeya, and the people that you find in Southern Africa. Okay. Somehow they share a common ancestor. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, the coffee. The coffee is a red bourbon. Uh, a, a, a red bourbon? Yeah, red bourbon beans. That sounds like a marketing ploy. I know, <laughs> I know, but actually you find different strains of coffee. Like mm. if you go, for example, if you go to uh, Yoga Chef in Ethiopia, Yoga Chef has its own strain called the, the Elums. Mm. If you go to Brazil, they have the Santoses. If you go to Kenya, they have SL28 and SL34. Uh, bourbons, um, it's, um, I, I believe it's, it's developed in, in Colombia, mm. but it grows very well in the... Um, Volcanic soil rich uh, areas close to the to, to the great great reef. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some parts of Rwanda, some parts of, of Tanzania, mm-hmm. um, uh, bourbons really thrive in, in those areas. Mm-hmm. So this particular bourbon was actually grown in a region called the, um, Akagera. Mm-hmm. So Akagera was famous uh, for the very sad. Oh, I know uh, the, the the massacre with the Hutu and the Tutsi, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, sir, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Sir, yeah. That's a river. In, in, yeah, okay, yeah. It, it's a river that flows from Rwanda uh, through t- Tanzania. I think it goes to the coast of Tanzania. Mm-hmm. So it's actually like an agricultural lifeline mm-hmm. in that region of the world. Mm-hmm. So currently, uh, Akagera, it's, it's slowly becoming one of the most sought-after coffee brewing regions of the world. Oh, in other words, you know, Kenya is supposed to have the rep- used to, well, they had the reputation of being the best coffee in Africa or something mm-hmm. like that. So you're trying to tell me the Rwandan strain is beating out the Kenyan strain? What are you telling uh, me? I'll be biased and say yes. Uh, mainly, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mainly because, you know, the, uh, Rwanda, mm-hmm. for a country the size, I'd say, of the free state in South Africa, mm-hmm. um, it has so many different types of soils mm-hmm. with the right elevation. So each and every region has its own uh, unique uh, growing properties. Mm-hmm. You know, unlike most growing areas, most mm-hmm. countries have like a very uniform uh, type of um, growing conditions for coffee. Oh yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Rwanda, it's very very unique. Like if I grow coffee in maybe um, Akagera, it will be different. Um, Coffee is grown in uh, uh, the Fuji Mountains, will be slightly different, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I love uh, Rwandan coffees. I, I, I always say, you know, Rwandan coffees are like African people. Mm. Yes, and I'm waiting. Yes, yeah, I'm waiting very, for the punchline. Yes, that, that, you know, we, we 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 may look the same, but we are at the same time so different, like mm-hmm. in terms of culture. In, language in terms of how we do things. Well, Moses, now you own Moses Coffee. Um, um, uh, I'm more fascinated. First of all, I can stand here and talk to you forever. Mm-hmm. So this passion, I'm calling it passion, that you have for this coffee and this knowledge, where did it come from? You seem pretty young to me. I mean, what, what, what's going on? Did you study it? Did you grow up on a coffee farm? Did you plant your own beans when you were five? What's going on? I grew up on a farm, but it wasn't a coffee farm. (laughs) And my actual passion is coffee is not actually the the, the plant itself. My actual passion is the people. Ah. You know, um, I, you know, as a young African man, 
uh, there's nothing you enjoy most than playing host. Oh yes, yes. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Sh sharing the love of something that you love with other people. Mm -hmm. So to me, uh, the sense of community uh, within uh, the coffee industry, that's what I love. You know, um, you, you meet people from all, all walks of life. You get what I'm saying? I, 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 coffee is not specifically for a certain group of people, it's for mm -hmm. everybody. Well, hold on a second. There, it, it, there, it does have a subculture. You say whatever you just said, but mm -hmm. I say no. You meet addicts from all over the world. <laughs> Because everybody I know, I just, you see, I have my little mocha because I'm not really a coffee drinker. I love okay. hot chocolate. But, mm -hmm. man, people, they, you know, they get the jitters. They get all kinds of, they're like, like, you know, a mess if they can't get their coffee. <laughs> I don't believe um, So what, what, I, what, I, what I'm liking with what we have, specifically Cape Town, like in terms of the coffee industry, is we have expertise. You know, uh, coffee is not just coffee anymore. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's way more that goes into making sure uh, you are able to make a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. For example, um, bean selection, um, the curation of the coffee itself, mm -hmm. um, I, I only serve African coffees. But that's what I'm asking. Uh, somebody else you, you serves Central South American coffees. Right. But that's what I'm asking. The, the, I'm listening to your level of expertise. That just didn't come from, from. I don't even think that comes from study. That comes from doing, 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 doing. Sure. How long did you do? How did that? How did that passion rise up? What what what, what happened? So uh, I, I've been doing coffee for well over ten years now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 actually the only proper job that I know how to do. Uh -huh. You know, but uh, very early on. When I started making coffee, um, I I was I was lucky enough to work with a guy mm -hmm. who was very very passionate about the beverage, and uh, okay. he encouraged me um, okay. to to go get my own information about the beverage, not just understand the beverage, uh, but also the culture behind the, mm. the, the, the beverage. You know, um, on Friday I made a a, a post about. You know, the Declaration of Independence uh, was actually read aloud for the first time inside a coffee shop in Philly. Oh, in Philadelphia? Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Actually, I know that fact. You get what I'm saying? I know that fact. Yes, so, yeah. um, the, the importance of, of, of the liquid network culture for me mm. is what is important. Like, mm. I've always believed like liquid networks uh, will always be a place for innovation, sharing innovation, meeting different people, mm -hmm. and getting influences for, for whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's, that's my, my, my whole um, idea with, with coffee, mm -hmm. to create a platform whereby mm -hmm. people from all walks of life can just come into a space and become themselves. Yeah. Well, Moses, it's been, a, a, literally, I, I talked to a lot of people on the planet for many years, you the one of the most informed, whatever. It's been a joy. Oh, wow. No, it's been a joy talking <laughs> to you, too, Anthony. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, you take care, man. Yeah, you, know, you too. We're, no, we're, uh, you're on the waterfront uh, with the V&A, with the Victorian, whoever, Alfred Wharton. Uh, upstairs. Yeah, this way. Huh? Just go upstairs and walk this way. Yeah. Um, where... Uh, Give me a good favor. Well, I'll, 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 and then, I'll put, put this to my YouTube, so I'll put it to some sort of information in the bottom where I get in contact. But, but, but you can be, you're located at the VNA waterfront, and this, what's this area called? Uh, so this area is called uh, Maker's Landing. Maker's Landing. This is the Cape Town Cruise Terminal. The, the, oh, the cruise terminal for the, for the ships that go For here. the ships, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are based in the Cape Town Cruise Terminal, but we also do a lot of uh, pop-ups. We do a lot of, of events. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, you can also check out, check us out uh, in Harrington Street inside a space called uh, Just Like Papa. Harrington Street. Yes, sir. That's over. Um, uh, Just uh, uh, District Six Museum. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. I know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So um, the idea of Moses Coffee actually started in the, in the East City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, thank you so very much. Amazing. Well, surely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. You take care, man. All right. Later.
you too. Enjoy.